If you're just naive, if you're just nice, if you'd never hurt anyone, you'd never hurt a fly, you don't have the capability for any of that, why would anyone ever take you seriously? You're, you're just, you're a domestic animal at best, you know, and a rather contemptible one at that. And it's a very strange thing because you wouldn't think that the revelation of the capacity for evil is a precondition for the realization of good. But I believe, first of all, why would you be serious enough to even attempt to pursue the good unless you had some sense of what the consequence was of not doing it? You're harmless, you're not virtuous. You're just harmless. You're like a rabbit. A rabbit isn't virtuous. You just can't do anything except get eaten. It's not virtuous. If you're a monster and you don't act monstrously, then you're virtuous. But you also have to be a monster. Well, you see this all the time. Harry Potter's like that too. It's like he's, he's flawed, he's hurt, he's got evil in him. He can talk to snakes, man. He breaks rules all the time, all the time. He's not an obedient at all. But you know, he has a good reason for breaking the rules. And if, and if he couldn't break the rules, him and his little clique of rule-breaking you know, troublemakers, if they didn't break the rules, they wouldn't attain the highest goal. So it's very peculiar, but it's, it's very, very, it's a very, 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 very common mythological notion. If you aren't a monster, you cannot negotiate. But if, you, if you've got that under control, then you don't have to be a monster. It's really paradoxical. So if you're just naive, well, that just means you're useless. You're good because you're harmless. That's, that's not good. That's easily manipulated. And so you think, well, how do you get out of that? Well, partly you watch people because you know what they're like, because you know what you're like, but you also know what you could do and would do if you were pushed. And so you don't have to show much of that when you're negotiating with someone for them to take you really seriously. So it's a strange thing, you know, but one of the things you pointed out too was that what you most need to know will be found where you least want to look. And that's because you haven't already looked there. And so it's a little different for every, everyone, right? Because your particular place you don't want to look isn't going to be the same as your place. But you're going to have a place you don't want to look. And what you haven't discovered, that's where it is. It's not okay for you to be a weak loser. It's not okay. And the reason it's not okay is because you could be way more than that. And it's a crime, an ethical crime, for you to allow all that necessary potential to go to waste. It hurts you, it hurts your family, it hurts the world. Really, really, it does. We know that people have an indomitable divine spirit. Well, how do you call that forth? Well, by challenging it. It's not going to come out without that. You're not going to be who you could be without pushing yourself to your limit. Because why would you be? It's not like it's easy. You have to be compelled in some sense. You have to be challenged. Those who have swords and know how to use them, but keep them sheathed, will inherit the world. And so like one of the things I tell young men, well, and young women as well, but the young men really need to hear this more, I think, is that you should be a monster. You know, because everyone says, well, you should be harmless, virtuous. You shouldn't do anyone any harm. You should sheath your competitive instinct. You shouldn't try to win. You know, you, you don't want to be too aggressive. You don't want to be too assertive. You want to take a back seat and all of that. It's like, no, wrong. You should be a monster, an absolute monster. And then you should learn how to control it. It's like, is there something wrong with being competitive? There's nothing wrong with it. There's something wrong with cheating. There's something wrong with being a tyrant. There's something wrong with winning unfairly. All of those things are bad, but you don't want people to win? What's the difference between trying to win and striving? You should be able to recognize in yourself all the horror of humanity and take responsibility for it, because that's what that means. And the thing that's so interesting about that is that if you can recognize in yourself all the horror of humanity, you will instantly have a hell of a lot more respect for yourself than you did before you did that. Because there's some real utility in knowing that you're a monster. Now, and just because you're a monster doesn't mean you have to be a monster, but it's really useful to know that you are one. 
So, and, and I, one of the things that Jung knew, and this is something that I, I find so amazing about his writings, I think something that really distinguishes him, for example, from Joseph Campbell, who talked about following your bliss, is like Jung said very clearly that the first step to enlightenment is the encounter with the shadow. And what he meant by that was everything horrible that human beings have done was done by human beings, and you're one of them. And so if you don't understand that, and to understand that really means to know how it was that you could have done it. And that's a shattering thing. To try to imagine that, to try to imagine yourself as someone who's engaged in medieval torture. To see how you could, in fact, do that. You're never the same after you learn that. But being never the same after learning that is unbelievably useful. Because when you understand that that's what you're like, then you're a whole different creature. And I don't think, and this is something I did learn from Jung, is that you cannot be a good person until you know how much evil you contain within you. It is not possible. I, I learned this in part when I had little kids. I, I wrote a chapter from my new book called Never Let Your Children Do Anything That Makes You Dislike Them. And why was that? And I wrote that after I knew I was a monster. And I thought, I'm going to make sure I like my kids. I'm going to make sure they behave around me so that I like them because I'm way bigger than them and I'm way more cruel than they are and I've got tricks up my sleeve that they cannot even possibly imagine and if, if they irritate me I will absolutely take it out on them and if you don't think that you're the sort of person that would do that then you are the sort of person who is doing it well there's evil in the world of all sorts and some of it's the evil in other people and some of it's the evil in your brother's heart. But the, the part of it that you can really do something about, that's the malevolence in your own heart. You can actually do something about that. And that's actually way more useful than you think. So, because if you can face it in you, then you start to understand it. And that also makes you strong enough to identify it and to fight it when you see it in the external world. Plus, you don't do any harm. It's like, like there's lots of people all over the world going out and doing reprehensible things. And you might say, well, you should go out and protest against them. Like, then sometimes you should, but most of the time you should think, where am I falling short of the ideal? My own ideal. It doesn't have to be one that someone puts on you. Where am I less than I should be? Where am I bitter? Where am I making the world a worse place than it has to be? Like, you ask yourself those questions, you'll be in for a big shock. Say, well, what would happen if you stopped doing that? That's what 12 Rules for Life is about. It's like, stop saying things that make you weak. Stop telling lies that you know to be lies. Stop doing things you know to be useless and counterproductive. Aim high, adopt some responsibility, and then see what the hell happens. It's like it'll work, and that's what I'm hoping people will do.